Yep. All right. Well, good evening. Uh, we'll get the meeting started. The March 15th select board meeting. Um, we've got Brad town Flo Smith. Uh, John Quinn isn't here at the moment. We've got David Sawyer, Justin Lawrence, myself and Vince Conti. Do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? We talked about uh, the state revolving loan programs. Yes, those are the those are the additions that I have. Okay. Any uh, public comment? Hearing none. Treasurer's report. Sorry, I was having a hard time. I'm clicking. Okay. Um, I don't have anything at this point. Everything I have is in the agenda. Okay. Um, what do we have? John just sent me a text. He's trying to get in. He said he can't find the link. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you can text that or not. Yeah, I'll text it. All right. And Andrew Shuford, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right. So you have a, an application for the Vermont Runners Club? Uh, that That's correct. We've got an application in for uh, race next month. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes. Uh, this We've been doing this for, this will be the 46th year, so a long time. Um, and it will be similar to what we did Two years ago, uh, we obviously couldn't hold the race last year. Uh, and so we are uh, doing the same thing we've done for many years, which is we begin and end the race uh, in Montpelier near the high school on the bike path. But we end up uh, using town roads for most of the course uh, since it is 10 miles. So we go out by the river on Junction Road, Three Mile Bridge Road, and go up a little bit on Jones Brook Road and come back around uh, back the way we came. And we'll probably have uh, probably about 75 people is, is our guess as to what we'll have this year. Um, and we'll have a little bit different protocol this year because of the distancing requirements that we have to have. So the starts will be staggered so we won't have big groups so it may take a little bit longer, maybe about 20 minutes or so more time than we used to have. But uh, it's on Saturday morning, April 24th, and we'll, the impact will be uh, between the times of like 8.45 till probably 10.30. Uh, and we might have a few people straggling in a little after that. But um, it's not going to be a lot of people on the road, but uh, we do like to get, you know, towns um blessing that 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 we so that we can hold the race and uh should be similar to in the past and we'll have course monitors out there to to try and keep everybody under control and keep people spaced out all right i see you've submitted the application along with the certificate of liability yes that's from our uh, insurance is named the town as uh, insured yep. Does anybody anybody have any comment? Uh, this is Steve Sawyer. I just real quickly, you have traffic control where you need it already aligned, or is is that the town uh, from the town or anything? Um, we have our at our intersect the major intersections. We have a volunteer there to direct. Um, in general, uh, we haven't had problems with with traffic. Um, and we will keep the runners on the side of the road so that they stay out of the way of the cars and, you know, keep the traffic flowing. We don't ever stop traffic uh, for this event. There's no, no need to. Okay. And particularly this year when we're spacing people out uh, more, uh, that definitely won't be to. They shouldn't be running together anyway um, based on the distancing they're supposed to do. Yeah, it's just uh, just uh, for the safety of the runners. That was, that was the only reason I was questioning that. Yeah, yeah, it's that's uh, a good point, but uh, we we try and make sure that they uh, stay to the side of the road and and don't 
impede the traffic and that, you know, I think generally on Saturday morning, we've had a pretty, pretty good result that we try and let everybody get along with the cars, and let the vehicles get along with us too, so. Did you take in, uh, tell me if you're gonna take in uh, uh, posts beside the roads that you're using, uh, information so that the motorists will know that, that the race is coming? Usually uh, you do that. We, uh, that's, that's a good point. We will, uh, you know, in, in years past, we usually put a sign up like on Wednesday or Thursday before to say that there'll be a, a race on Saturday on this in this area. And on the day of the race, we will put up a, a race in progress sign uh, at various points just to let them know that there is um, there could be people out there in the road that they don't normally see out there. Very good. I make a motion to approve the application as presented by Andrew Shuford tonight on behalf of the Central Vermont Runners Club for Saturday, April 24th for the road race, 8.45 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. for the roads of Junction Road, Three Mile Bridge Road, and Jonesbrook Road as presented tonight. That was second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Excellent. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Good night. All right. Next, we have uh, Applebee's liquor license. Good. We've got one first class and one third class license for Applebee's. Make a motion to approve a first class and a third class liquor license for Applebee's at 199 Turnpike, Berlin, Vermont. I'd second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Perfect. Um, next up, looks like we have Tim for the Crosstown Road closure. Yep, again, uh, well, Tim's with us if you want to speak to a Tim, but it's that time of year. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we're getting the mud season. It's yeah. one, of the, one of the not look forward to ones. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking for the board's approval for to shut it down for a few weeks so it doesn't get completely trashed with traffic and – Hopefully, if everything goes good with everything else, um, my plan is maybe while it's closed down to do some of that other work that we had talked about during budget season, um, try to get some of those uh, the clay boils there out of the hill, dig them, ditch them, put some drainage stone, mat and gravel. Um, and if we can do some of that while it's closed, depending on weather and what the other roads uh, start looking like if we're not hauling a lot of gravel for fixing mud um, try to do some of that work while it's closed so we don't have to deal with the traffic and hopefully speed that up a little bit I'd make a motion to approve the closure of the Crosstown Road for this seasonal posting I second that any further discussion Tim, what kind of time period are you talking about here? Last year, it went on way too long. We were getting a lot of complaints from the people in West Berlin about how long it was closed. Well, you know what I mean? It's, you can't open it too soon because if it's not completely dry up on the top, then they're just going to wreck it up there. But, yeah, as, as soon as it's passable for the amount of traffic that it gets, I think we can open it back up. Because if you open it too, too early – you know what I mean? The hill dries out because it's in the sun. And then like up by uh, Mike Richardson's and Gary Richardson's, uh, that has a tendency to last a little bit longer for some reason. Um, that usually becomes the other second trouble spot late later for some reason. But I'm noticing this year so far, it seems like they're drying out fairly good. We've We've scuffed a few roads last week when it was 50, 60 degrees out uh, and they were drying out pretty good. So 
hopefully, hopefully we won't have to have it much more in a couple of weeks. But then again, if we want to do some of that work while it's closed, it might last another week or two, or we can, you know, I mean, we can reopen it. And then if, if we end up closing it down for a day or two, where we do some work over there, that'll be a different, different thing. But by all means, you know what I mean? We don't want to inconvenience people, but, you know, it takes about the same time to drive around as it does to go up over it when it's muddy and rough. And um, Oh, I, I understand. I'm just trying yeah. to address the complaints that we got last year. No. I mean, I, and when I look at it, I think about the same thing about Berlin Pond, right? And and the ruddy mess that that becomes and the, the amount of time it would take to drive around if we shut down that as well. Yeah. So, but it, you know, it, and I'm just, I, I'm not, you know, saying we should or shouldn't. I'm just saying, I'm not sure how we came up with that we should close that road down and not some of the other th pass throughs that get wrecked just as bad. I'm not sure. I know they've been doing it for the last six to seven years, I believe. Um, I know they, they paid attention to it one year versus the, the first year they think they closed it. Um, they kind of kept track of material versus the last, the, you know what I mean? The year they didn't close it to the year that they did close it. And I believe it was like seven or $8,000 in difference, like from spring cost of maintenance, hauling gravel out there, fixing mud between truck time, material yeah. time and man time. Um, Good enough for me. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think the closure is going to depend on the weather. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of dictates how long it's going to be closed. All right. Any additional discussion? I didn't, I, Brad, did we, I didn't know that we had to make a motion on that. Didn't we didn't do it like that last year? We usually do. Do we? We okay. did last year. Oh, okay. My bad. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So my plan is is to um, probably start doing that tomorrow with the anticipation that uh, Wednesday is going to be up to 50 degrees according to the weather. Um, trying to The hill got in some pretty bad shape last week when it was 50, 60 degrees. So, um, so we don't lose it anymore. They packed it down over the weekend with the cold weather. But the the clay boils are getting up to foot, two foot high in places. So just so you guys are aware, that's what I was looking. Yep. Thank you, Tim. Thank yep, you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Fisher Road Culvert. Yeah, um, I'd like to introduce, as you all probably know him, Robert Clark from Water <laughs> Creek. He's here to... Uh, talk a little bit about where where they're at uh, from the engineering side and what the next steps are as far as finalizing the design and getting ready to go out to bid on that. Mr. Clark? Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to come and give you all a quick update on, on where we're at um, at this point. So we've submitted uh, two applications, uh, permit applications, their waivers, uh, one for the Army Corps of Engineers and one for um, the State of Vermont Wetlands Program uh, for the project. So um, the only project permit we're going to need is a stream alteration permit from the state. Uh, we submitted a draft package to them with the plans in their current state, which are essentially <laughs> final plans uh, for any review and comment before we submit the formal, um, the formal package to them. So I think we're in really good shape there. And um, the next steps really at this point are to, to bid the project and, and then go out to construction. Um, I mentioned to Vince uh, earlier, I think it's going to be uh, about $6,000 to bid the project. Um, and I think right now, just looking at where we're at, we're, we're about $10,000 under the estimate that we had given you um, a few months back to design and permit this project. So what I was hoping to do is um, get tentative approval to, to move forward with bid um, on this, and then we can provide a, a formal uh, proposal and contract for your uh, review and approval at a, at a later date. Okay. Um, 
Does anybody have any questions? Robert, um, is the is the design going to change any from what you what you were thinking it would be? Um, can you can you explain a little? Or well, I'm not sure of your question, Brad. Yeah, the um, I'm trying to think how to phrase it. Uh, uh, have well, first off, you've done the design work. You did your core samples, correct? Correct. And uh, so the. The, when you say final design, what are you talking about? Are you, are you changing the, the, the footings or are you changing the uh, aesthetics or what? No. So at this point, we've actually, what we've asked the stream alteration engineer for is a approval on the grading plan and, and the slope that we're proposing through the structure. So one of the things that's a little bit challenging with what we do sometimes, especially when you have situations like you do at, at this uh, intersection is we actually have to survey up and downstream of the culvert and try and get an average uh, average slope across that uh, water body. And it's a little bit challenging there because you have a lot of floodplain and, and wetland in between Fisher Road and, and Payne Turnpike. And then you obviously get a fairly narrow channel that works its way down towards the, uh, the city of Montpelier's water treatment plant. So what we were hoping to do was just get their approval on what we've proposed, which is a uh, uh, based on measurements and stuff that we've taken. I don't, I don't envision our plan changing at all. Um, but one of the, one of the biggest things that we try and do is we have to size the, uh, the stone that goes in this structure, uh, the erosion stone so that it, that it can handle the velocities that are there. And if we, if we have to make significant changes to the slope of the structure, you know, how much pitch you have from one end to the other, mm -hmm. then it can change how much water can go through it and whether or not we'd need, potentially a thicker layer of stone. But at this point, the design itself is finished. Um, you know, we've, we've uh, settled on a, a 28 foot concrete arch. Like we presented, like I presented previously, uh, the footings are at a, at a reasonable depth. They're going to be about six feet below uh, the water body elevation, the grade uh, in the structure. The footings themselves are, are spread footings. They're eight feet wide by three feet deep with uh, reinforced concrete. So it's a, it's a relatively simple, uh, shallow foundation. So. So you, well, I thought you were going to use a aluminum arch. You're going with concrete. We went with concrete. Yeah. Yep. And What's the life you, expectancy? Uh, 60 plus years or more. And why did you go with concrete versus the aluminum? Uh, we can, to be honest, they, they make the structures in the same shape. So if you wanted to save a little bit of money, you could, the, the estimate for the aluminum, you know, the, so the, the bulk of the cost is in the, the digging and the setting and the pouring of the foundation, dealing with the, the bypass of the water while you're trying to do all that work um, and, and how you handle the stream, the difference between the concrete and the aluminum uh, between the manufacturers was, I think, uh, I don't have it right in front of me. I want to say it was 40 or $50,000. And to me, it, it um, you can get a lot more life out of a concrete structure. What's the life of the aluminum? They, well, they, they say that that's rated for 50 plus years. Um, and, and the concrete is uh, rated for 60 plus. Yeah. It, it, in my opinion, you could probably get longer in that application yeah. too. Um, I'm under the understanding that's a natural bottom you, you, you're doing on this to put the stream back into the, uh, for, for nature's conservancy or whatever, to put that back to uh, just a natural bottom, open bottom. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So pretty much every, every large structure like this, even, even the bigger box culverts now they get infilled with uh with a erosion stone and then they get um, natural material placed in around them to provide a um, kind of a natural path through from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely do we see the, uh, like a concrete bottom or, or something of that nature there. So that's what this would be is it, it would be a, a, a riprap or an erosion stone lined structure that over time, you know, when you get different flood events over time, it'll silt in with other material as well and, and become even more natural. And that's really what the state's trying to promote with these types of things. Okay. The bigger, the bigger difference here is the width requirement. So you're going from about 11 and a half feet wide to about 28 feet wide, um, which makes a big difference in um, really how fast the water's moving through there. <clears throat> Slows it down. So any other 
questions or comments for Robert? No. Um, so, what are you looking for us to do, Robert? Can you say that? Can you? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to rephrase it. So right now, um, we're waiting to see if we have any comments from the state on the, the, per, the draft permit application before we finalize it. But I, I estimate we're about $10,000 under the budget that you guys authorized previously. And what I was hoping to do tonight would be to get a tentative approval that if the state comes back and, and authorizes us to go forward, we can submit that permit application and then start the bidding process for this. Um, kind of concurrently with the, the submission of that last permit. So um, I don't expect that this project actually qualifies for coverage under the state's general permit for, for stream work. So um, it's usually, you know, somewhere between 30 and 45 days to turn that permit around on the state's end. Um, so I think there's really no risk in bidding the project um, and starting that process. It kind of helps accelerate it and gets us closer to being able to, to start construction this summer. Okay. Well, Robert, you had mentioned something that the bid process of this, you have estimated cost around $6,000. What's that for warnings and, and, and it's uh so for something like this, it's a big enough project. The, the process usually involves um, we, we put the advertisement in the paper. Um, we, we, we attend a, a, a pre-construction or pre-bid meeting, excuse me, with contractors. And then we answer questions. And for something like this, it's usually done in a, in a formal addenda to the contract. So for us, we would, we, we have a set of plans and we have a set of bidding documents and contractors are allowed uh, for a period of about three weeks to ask questions, um, get clarification. That way everybody's bidding the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so that, that $6,000 is essentially for us to manage that phase, provide, plans and stuff to the contractors and and um and then what we would do is we would come back to you with a, a tabulation of all the bids that are received and a, and a recommendation to award the uh the contract after that period is over all right is that a fixed cost robert um it, it certainly can be i hadn't uh given any thought to that i it usually um, usually we do those on an, either an hourly or a lump sum basis, uh, but it's all about, about the same because it, it really, what matters is how many addendums you have to do. So some of the larger water type projects we do, like if we were doing a, a water treatment plan or something like mm -hmm. that, you might have three or four addendum in, in it because it's a, just a bigger project, something like this, we would plan on one addendum. So it might, might be a little bit less or a little bit more, but I think six is a good, good number. And I'm happy to do it whatever are, whatever way what, you guys would like, or I could give you guys. No, I was a, just curious on how you came up with with the number. I mean, at two hundred dollars an hour, you're talking about thirty hours. So, I was just you know, someone that does a lot of contracting work. I was trying to you know figure out what it what went into it. I don't do a lot of bridge contracting work. Though, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's different. Um, when do you uh, expect to hear back from the state? Uh, this week, actually, they've, they've had it for about a week. I would expect, I was hoping for something today, but it didn't come through. So. Okay. Does anyone, anybody want to make a motion or. Yeah, I'd, I'd make a motion to, to proceed with the next step uh, on the uh, Fisher Road culvert process. Second. I second that motion. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Excellent. Thank you, Robert. Great. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Move license permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-18 for payroll from February 14th, 2021 to February 27th, 2021 paid on March 3rd of this year in the amount of $46,756.15. Also payroll warrant 21G19 with checks 2965 to 21013 in the amount of $56,438 and 36 cents. Also February reconciled bank statements for general fund, sewer commission and water division and the February journal entries as well. 
second that motion. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Perfect. Um, now might might be a good time to put in that state revolving the loan program for the water infrastructure. Don't you think, Vince? Okay, um, happy to do so. Uh, I sent out a package that contained two uh, state revolving loans, one for the asset management plan for all the wastewater infrastructure. Uh, that loan amount was for 55,000 and that 50% of that is a grant. The second one, is for the uh, the Crosstown project, and that is for 9,220. And again, 50% of that is also a grant. The complete package, um, I did send you, again, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, review that or not, or if you have any questions, if you have any specifics, um, Tom is also with us tonight as well. Okay. Tom, do you have anything you want to add to this? I know just the, the but what the Apollo Work Board was trying to do with the Crosstown Road one is to get a uh, shovel ready project. We're anticipating the possibility of some federal stimulus monies being available. Um, and there's those are likely to go to projects that are ready to to um, uh, be be developed in addition to the the the, the crosstown road is a two-piece you're only allowed to have two phases you're only allowed to to request uh, uh, financing from clean water on a phase-by-phase -phase basis so you know the select board will be seeing uh, phase two likely in a couple of weeks uh, to the tune of about uh, thirty thousand dollars to do the final design on that again um, uh, if without st stimulus money the, the the public's work board will would would likely not complete that project but again they're trying to anticipate if there if, if federal funds will become available it sounded like the co the the stimulus the American relief fund money was going to need to be covid related in some some aspect. Uh, if if you if you looked at some of the the Biden um, uh, during his campaign, there was a there was a big effort to put monies into infrastructure, and we're thinking that it's it's really not COVID related. It's more of a stimulus for uh, economic development. Yeah, John, just to just to inform you, I did get a uh, an email from Nancy Chartrand of the Central Vermont Regional Regional Commission uh, with mm -hmm. with regard to that, with a little bit more information. Um, it, it does uh, one of the first bullet points. It does say um, it has to be related to coronavirus, but in the third bullet, she did say it also is to, can be used to make necessary investments in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. So if we can tie it to that. Uh, okay. it, also, it also gave us an estimated amount of funds that the town of Berlin um, could expect, even though it's not finalized yet as well, of about 280000 So, Okay. So I didn't, I guess I didn't catch uh, in the loan document itself when I was looking at it. So is the 55000 before the grant or after the grant? 50% uh, of that is a grant. Okay, so the loan amounts would be twenty seven thousand five hundred roughly, or whatever. Correct. Yeah, half of that. Yep. Yep. Anybody care to make a motion? Make the motion to approve the documents as presented this evening by Vince Conci. I would second that motion. Okay. Just trying to look at this numbers here on this real quick. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, Dave, take what are you looking at? The numbers on the loan? Oh, I was just looking at the 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 the, the paper that Vince sent us on the 
state revolving loan fund. So I was just trying to, to pick the numbers on those. But yeah, we're good. I just, I was a little off <laughs> looking at things there. So, but we're all set. Okay. You're good. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, well, with the, um, trying to think, without this being a warned, a warned um, item on the agenda, I'm just wondering about voting on a uh, a money item without it having a proper warning. Yeah, we probably That's a should. good point, Brad. Yep, that was that one's on me, Brad. I got to take that one. Um, I didn't revise the agenda to to get that on there in time. Is there any time limitation on this, Vince? Uh, I, I think. I've got a note that uh, needs to needs to be done by five April. So, so the answer the uh, uh, there's there's not a, a time limit from the state. We you could actually start uh, spending money to, on these projects. Uh, the public work board has contractors lined up. It's just that we'd like to like the select board to give their blessing before we start spending the money. Why would we spend the money if we don't know if we're going to get it from the state yet? You'll 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 get the money from the state. That the I've spoken to Tom Brown from uh, the agency. They'll they'll award the money. I would I would think that it would make sense to wait until we before we start spending money to know that we're for certain going to get it. I mean things do up do occur. I'm sure. I mean the last administration changed the guidance and the rules ten times. On, on the money and i get it's a new administration um but there's no track record here of what will happen and i know he made campaign promises but everyone makes campaign promises <laughs> so let's so, uh, on the next I, meeting to warn, I, I, warn I'll, I'll warn it on the next meeting excellent Yeah, do we have to rescind the motion? Probably not, right? Just uh, hold the vote. We can vote it down. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 Next, we have minutes from February 1st and February 15th. Has everybody had a chance to review those? Sound anybody? <laughs> Flo, John, Brad, Dave. <laughs> I look I looked them over, but I wasn't uh on at that, so I don't think I can vote on that. Right. That's fine. Yeah, I think you know, my only comment would be is that we you know, especially while we're remote, we should be putting a uh disclaimer at the bottom that the full video of our select board meetings are posted on Orca Media. Um, and for the most accurate reflection of what people say, you can refer to the video as long as it's posted. Just as a note to let people know, because there's been a lot of, well, you said, he said, he said, you know, whatever. Uh, when you go back and look at the videos, it's all there from each one of our meetings. So um, it would be nice, you know, to have that at the at the bottom of each of our uh, minutes to say that, you know, Orca was here and you can find the the full broadcasting on, on their website. I will add that, John. Makes a lot of sense. Good idea. Does anyone care to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 15th. And I'll second that with the caveat to have the um, information that John just explained at the bottom. I think that would be good for all, all meetings going forward. All right. Any further discussion on the February 15th minutes? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion, carries. Motion carries. Um, what about the February 1st minutes? Okay.
Make a motion to approve the February 1st minutes. Can I and I second the motion. Any further discussion? All in yeah. favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Justin, we're having a hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry. Committee, board appointments, and bylaws is next on our agenda. Okay, so that's, again, that's something that uh, I'm just looking for um, the information that I sent you for the uh, approval to move, move forward with it if you're in agreement with that. It's something that we talked about early on when I came on board as well, as about standardizing how the uh, boards and the committees work and the... Uh, the, and how the appointments are done and having some uh, bylaws and policies so they work consistently as well. Um, so I drafted those um, those up, uh, sent them out for your review. And if the board is okay with that, uh, the next steps for me would be to eat, meet with each of the boards, roll these out and explain it to them uh, and start putting them in place and having them use them as their regular process of operation and in addition to that um set up with them uh once a month to have one of the committees have an attendee at the uh, select board meeting to provide updates and also provide uh provide a monthly report on uh, on their progress or what they're what they're planning or or doing did everybody get a chance to review those uh, yes I don't, I don't see them. So was that something you sent with a different attachment, Vance? It w probably would have been in a different, yeah, it was. I sent it twice. You were probably only in the second one. If you didn't receive it, I will uh, resend it to you. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I'm scrolling through the whole thing and I, that I don't I, see. The, the first one I sent back before you were on the board, David. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't see the second one. I, I've okay. got everything else, but I don't see that. I'd like to read them over. Yeah, absolutely. I will get those out to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we we can put that on the next agenda as well for just so Dave has a chance to review it and be part of it there, get his input. Um, we also I was going to use this section on the agenda if we can. Do we should appoint? We need to appoint liaisons and. Uh, for all of our different departments. We, we should do that sooner than later too, right? Brad, what do you, when do we usually appoint the liaisons or the board of directors to the fire department, the town, the Berlin? Slip? Can't hear you, Justin. When do we usually do the uh, representative to the fire departments or the liaisons too? I was thinking we'd use this set, this piece of the agenda to be able to do that. Well, um, if you're going to use the liaison system, it doesn't matter because it's, um, it's, uh, strictly in the board itself. Um, the appointments and whatnot, those are usually done within a month or so after the, uh, after the uh, March meeting, March, uh, town meeting. Okay. So do we want to put those on the next agenda? Do you, do you guys think? Do you want to do the next agenda with that? Do you want to do the next meeting? Do you want to do the appointments for the boards or do you want to take care of it now with the liaisons and fire department? I think the next meeting would be fine. Okay. I apologize for the microphone. Um, next on the agenda, we have the uh, vast Irish Hill Trail. Justin, I can't hear you. I don't know if others can, but I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I apologize. I heard you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm talking closer to the microphone on my laptop, but I don't know. It must not be working any better the closer I get. So I stayed away. Uh, we have the Irish Hill update next on the agenda. Okay, so um, the uh, Conservation Commission reached out to me today. Um, their meeting with VAST is taking place right now. Uh, so they uh, said they may not be able to join um, to talk about that steering committee 
uh, this evening. Um, they did send me a document that I did forward on to the board today with regards to the members that they already uh, had on working on the steering committee. I, I don't know if you uh, had a chance to see that or not. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, then the other question um, that they posed to me to bring to the board is, um, is there someone from the board who would also like to be on that steering committee? And they would like to get someone from the planning committee onto the board as well. Did everybody take a peek at who's on the committee now? And has, have you guys reviewed all of that? I did. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do we, how do we, uh, I mean, we've got an abutting landowner on there. Um, how did, how, do you know how the conservation committee came up with who they wanted to have on this steering committee? Um, the way that I understand it is they opened it up for volunteers. Um, they reached out to all the organizations that are using the trail, plus VAST, which is, is, is Josh, to ask for volunteers to be on there. Um, and that, that's my understanding of how this, uh, this came about to this point. So, so Vince, did they advertise? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that one, John. I can yeah, find I out mean, if it was if it was posted or not. I mean, I I know most of the people on this this list, and they're great people. Um, but I think every one of them, with the exception of maybe the mountain bike, well, the mountain bike and a hunting person, um, was against the trail. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a little concerned. We just picked, you know, people join the the steering committee so they so they could you know go one way or the other um and and maybe that's a that's a false impression that i have but that's kind of the way i felt um you know i'd like to know if it was opened up and they if they advertised for people to be on it or if it was just you know the people that were on each one of the zoom calls no i i i will reach out and uh get an answer to that question for you tomorrow, John. And, and I think, you know, from, they, my perspective, uh, from my perspective, um, I think there should be a select board member on it. Um, and that, that's why at the last meeting I said, you know, let's, let's just talk about the composition of the steering yep. committee and what it looks like. Cause I think a lot of these questions are important, you know, who makes up the board are all the conservation committee people on it, or is there one conservation person on it? There's one person from Vast on it. Um, it and I'm not, you know, I, I'm very interested in what it looks like. Is there five conservation people on it? Um, I don't know. On, on the steering committee? I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah, that's, uh, I, they don't have anybody listed on the, from the board on the steering committee at this point. Right. So, but, but oh, I have, I have to assume that there's conservation committee people on the steering committee right i would i would think <laughs> um, maybe maybe we can review the minutes from their meeting tonight and kind of that'll have a good idea of the makeup of it true yeah how often do they plan on this steering committee uh meeting do we have any feel for that how much time they're looking basically Based on what we know, Dave, uh, we we tasked them with uh, bringing us a, a draft or a recommendation of the the updated management plan for Vast uh, by June first. So it's a it's a rather short term uh, appointment. All right. You look interested, Dave. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I. I <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I would be willing to 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 do it uh, as long as you know it's a short term type of thing. Uh, 
I, I would be willing to, to, to sit on there. The steering committee there. And I've expressed an interest as well. So I'm fine with whomever folks wish to be on from the board, or even if our um, administrator was on. Either way is fine with me. Yeah, if, there's, if you guys are interested, I'm more than willing to back out of the way, believe me. No, uh, no, I didn't mean it that way at all. No, I wouldn't no, even I want to be on it if I was considered that I was opposed, and why would I want to be on it if I'm opposed to it? I'm just interested in being on it as a board member, as a neutral party. Well, exactly. But it doesn't matter to me. It's just a matter of one of us being on there. So whomever it is is totally fine with me. Well, and I think, I think you know, by... By, by the rule of law, two of you can be on it. There's no, um, as long as there's not three where it equals a quorum. Good point. Um, and, um, in Northfield, we had two members assigned to a lot of different things just because, you know, everyone's busy. And if you can't make a True. meeting, then you have another representative there. So, right. Um, you know, as long as we don't have three, I think we're, we're all set. So with that, I, I'd, I'd, I'd make a motion that we appoint uh, both Flo Smith and David Sawyer to the to the commission or the steering committee. Excuse me. Can I get a second? I'd second. I think it has to be you, yeah. Brad. Brad. Has it? Second, but I have something for discussion. Okay. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> How big is this committee going to be? If you have two members from the board, you have a member from uh, all the interested other committees. You're getting up there. I mean, they the 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 rule I've heard after seven people becomes pretty ineffective. Yeah. Yeah, by looking at it, it looks like if with two from the board, it looks like they'd have about ten members. Uh, um. And that's without any conservation committee people on there as well. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Well, you might want you might want to think about that. Well, do you do you think we should ask the conservation committee to come in and discuss the structure of this steering committee? Well, from what Vince said, uh, when they um, when they uh, started to put the steering committee together. There wasn't any any um, basis as far as pro or con to the trail. It was just that they asked these what they thought were the committees that would be interested and have input into this. Um, right. right. I think I think the conservation committee is well aware of the fact that their current uh, management plan allows for the use with vast and that this this for the new management plan is a, is separate um for writing it but i um yeah i don't i don't i don't know it seems like there's a lot of going to be a lot of different input and a lot of different directions and we and nothing will probably get accomplished or it'll be much slower in the process with so many hands in the pot so to speak could I just interrupt for just a second? Um, I did put an agenda for the uh, commission. Um, they have an agenda they posted for March 17th. They have a meeting. Uh, they said plan for first steering committee meeting on March 24th. Then their next item was review of March 15, 21 meeting with VAST, 30 minutes. Okay, so obviously they're meeting with VAST today or tonight, survey with regards to monitoring usage of Darling Trail during weekends and the dis discussion next steps management plan. So they are gonna have another meeting on the 17th at two o'clock and it's gonna be a Zoom meeting and it is posted on our website on the front page. And that's uh, that was the 17th? Yes, which is this Wednesday. Uh, Zoom, okay. I, I, I believe they're planning to have weekly meetings until they get this result with that. Okay. Well, we have a we have a motion out there. So, is there any other discussion? Well, although, 
as as long as we can take in um, as long as it's possible to take in um, uh, I'm just trying to think would we be better off instead of having two members from the select board on it to have one member approved by the board and a and a um, alternate if one person couldn't make it It, you know, hmm. I'm looking at this thing, and I'm I'm kind of confused because you have the commission that that is working on the on 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 these 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 issues with on this trail, and now they've got a steering committee. It seems like they're doing to me, and I may I'm I'm missing something, but it seems like they're doing the, the same thing. They're 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 both trying to come up with a plan where it should be the commission coming up with the plan with some outside uh, uh, I don't know how I'm trying to construct this to say, but it seems like what's a steering committee is doing the same thing that the commission's doing. It, maybe am I, I right could, or am I wrong? Maybe I could help Dave. It could have been by the way that I made the motion. Um, I, I think on, February 1st for VAST and the Conservation Committee to build the, the management plan for the trail, for the snow machine trail. And so sure. the, the Conservation Committee's thought was, well, we shouldn't stop, and please correct me if anyone has a different interpretation. Um, we shouldn't stop at snow machines. The whole entire plan, plan really needs to be rewritten. We should talk to mountain bikers because we never updated it for them. We should talk to ATVers, we should talk to hunters, we should talk to snowshoers, we should talk to skiers and rewrite the plan, you know, as a whole. I think that's where they started to build the steering committee. I think that I think that was their intention was that's how they were coming up with the steering mm -hmm. committee approach. But I think my motion to have VAST and the conservation committee build the plan kind of, you know, confused it all maybe. Yeah, but isn't ultimately it's the the the, the committee, the, the nature's committee to uh, to come up with this plan. But now they're putting a steering committee together just simply to gather the information needed for them. Is that I mean, it seems like me something's going to get lost in, in the in. In the translation of this, you know, of, of, of what of what they're ultimately trying to do. And that falls on the, the commission that comes to us as a select board to make the final, final judgment. I, I, right. I, I think I maybe the scope of work was big enough to where they didn't feel with the size of their membership, they could do it in the time frame we laid out. Okay. Well, I think they'll, they, we can ask them to be in attendance at the next meeting to discuss this and give us some more input and get us up, get you up to speed too, David, if you'd like. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go on that zoom meeting on the 17th, just to see if I can get some more from it. And I'm looking, you know, at, at the steering committee, the makeup seems to be pretty decent. You know, uh, they're suggested, you know, from fish and game, the impact on the area, uh, Trevor Whipple, it's a little, uh, um, you know, the liability issues, you know, Trevor's great at what he does. Uh, and Josh, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I just, just to me, it seems like the steering committee is doing what the commission, you know, the nature's that that committee should have been doing and not, not throwing it on the back of the steering committee. Uh, but I don't know the makeup of the steer of the other committee that uh, has been tasked with coming up with the plan. Well, it sounds like you uh, made a motion on the floor for you to participate in that a little bit more and uh, maybe get up to speed there. So any yeah. further discussion? All right. I just All was going to add that I will not be able to participate this Wednesday. So I'd like to defer and have David be the person on the committee. I think that would be wonderful as I would not be able to make the weekly meetings. I and just a real quick thing too, on that note, I'm going to be gone April 3rd to the 10th. So uh, I won't be available anywhere at that point. 
I think th I think that's all the more reason to have two people. But that's that's just my opinion. Is because everyone's kind of busy, and you know, I th think weekly meetings during the day are are kind of problematic. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that we can do, um, not that he doesn't have enough to do, is you know, assign Vince. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I could he, do it between April 3rd and 10th, and I could pitch hit for David as well. I just would not be able to do it on a weekly basis, and especially not two days from now, unfortunately. So I really appreciate that David's willing to, and if that works for him, I'm fine with that, and I'd be fine with assisting on the time frame of April 3rd through the 10th as well. So it sounds like the motion still works. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, say, say aye. 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 Well, motion carries. Uh, round table. Brad, do you got anything? No. Nope. Hello? Not this evening. Thanks, Justin. John? Dave? No. No. Anything for round table, John? I didn't see it say yes or no. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank Have you, everyone. Have a good evening, everyone. You too, everybody.